welcome back, it's Christina again with The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a bison. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Okay, so, um, here's the, the buffalo, or the, the bison, American buffalo. Um, so, uh, oh, <clears throat> sorry, my voice just kind of decided it didn't want to work anymore. Um, so I've been doing something a little bit different recently. I've been doing a lot of experimentation. Um, I did a macaw and a, and a red fox, so I'm going to do it now with the buffalo, where um, I am doing just a little bit of segmenting out chunks of fur, and then also adding in, you know, another splash of color. So. I might add in, after I do this brown, I might add in some orange, and then maybe in the shadowed section, some blue. Um, I find, I've found that it, it works really nicely, but for now we're gonna get started. Um, just kind of going down, you know, the middle of his, of his head here. Um, so I am actually following out these um, lines of, of fur. I'm still filling in between so it's not going to be fully there, but it'll be there, you know, at least a bit. Um, the other thing I have found that seems to help with this style is instead of doing my very vague, um, oh, what's the word? My very vague sketching where it's a lot looser in that first layer is I go ahead and just add in enough lines for this to be kind of a shadow already. So I basically turn this all into shadow, which is just a lot more lines as I'm setting it up. But then when I'm adding highlights, it's a lot quicker. So um, it's just kind of as I'm doing that, for anyone who doesn't know or you haven't followed my channel, what I'm doing is a lot of very, very light so I'm not putting a lot of pressure here. Um, it's all light pin pressure um, and just sort of filling in lines in the direction the hair would grow. Um, and that's what'll make it look uh, more realistic. So I'm gonna get this whole thing done in shadow and uh, you know, in this brown, so minus the eye. So I'll get the whole thing done minus the eye and the horns um, in this brown color and I will be right back. All right, so I'm just gonna fix one little spot that I just noticed. I don't necessarily like how it looks. Um, okay, now we need the horns. Um, do a little bit more yellow than I was intending. I was just gonna do it in white, but I don't know. I feel like more cream would look a little better. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing, right? Except instead of the, you know, rough individual sort of chunks of, of clumps of hair that I had for um, uh, face, it's gonna be, you know, longer, more even strokes. So um, I'm gonna get the horns done um, in the shadow, right? Because I'm still doing the shadow. And as I do it, 
you know, as I'm as I'm drawing, you'll see that I'm changing the angle of my stroke as it comes down and around, right? So as the horn turns, my stroke will turn to um, the angle of my lines. Uh, I actually probably don't need that for this side. I'll move for the other. So um, you know, just angling the the strokes along with the um, uh, curvature and otherwise just um, sort of filling that in. So I'm going to do that for both horns and I'll be right back. Now to add the highlights and shadows. Um, the horns would both have a bit of highlight, so I'm gonna have the highlight coming from above and to the right. Um, so, the horns, now since I already kind of did all of this in shadow, um, I'm, I don't have to put a lot of pin pressure, right? When I'm doing, when I'm talking about doing it in shadow, I know I mentioned earlier, but it's just light pin pressure and then you sort of fully fill in a spot. So you can add highlight in one of two ways. You can either put more pin pressure or you can add more lines. Both are effective at, at getting a nice highlight. So once you have um, you know, shadow in place, it's a lot easier to add highlight because you don't have to add a lot of pin pressure and that allows it to blend very easily. You can just add more lines. You can see here, I'm not really adding a ton of pin pressure um, or you probably can't see that I'm not adding pin pressure, but I'm not. Um, and then you can just add um, uh, more lines in to get a nice good solid highlight going because you know the more the lines the more the highlight just like the more the more the um, pin pressure the more the highlight so it's just a nice easy way to do it right so uh, on the horn the reason I did that on the horn you are gonna have um, you know, a nice bit of highlight. You're going to want it on the other one as well. I'm going to change that just a little bit. Because you want it to kind of blend as the horn would rotate and around. Right, so you're going to have some shadowing on that back side. And you'll have a nice bit of highlight as it comes around here. And it'll that highlight, because the light source is off to the right, will ram right into the brown. Um, if this were reversed, where the light source was coming from the left, it uh, it would not. The head would cast a shadow, but you know, depending on where your light source is, depends on exactly how you're adding shadows to your to your subject. So in this case, those shadows are in such a way that that edge would just sort of get a nice ram of highlight. And then as the horn rounds underneath, you would go back into, into shadow, right? And so some of that will change. The horn kind of loops around. So you start off with, with highlight, you know, pushing all the way over. And then you can brighten it up with more lines, right? You can see how easy and quick that is. Adding a few more lines and it brightens it up even more. And I could add more pin pressure if I wanted to. It's just a little easier to blend if you don't, because more pin pressure, what, what more pin pressure does is it thickens the lineup. Um, and so, you know, with less pin pressure, the line is thinner. You sort of blend into the thinner line, it's easier to have a thinner line. Um, and so brightening it up with more lines instead of more pin pressure makes it that a little easier, but it's not completely unfeasible to, to just add more pin pressure in. To, especially if you're like in this middle section, right? I'm still adding highlight around here. So I could just add, you know, more pin pressure so I have some highlight space to work with. Okay. There's the first horn, now we'll get the second. Same thing, right? Being mindful, light sources to the right. Tip would certainly, just like on the other one, right? You have a nice, solid, happy, light-filled tip. You're going to get that over here, too. And then allow 
allow that to blend in. So I'm going to finish out the highlight on the horns. Really, it's, it's just this one. And I'll be right back. Going to add highlights onto um, the fur. With the keeping in mind, right, light source coming from above and to the right. So. Going to um, still kind of fill in a little bit in between, but being mindful of the fact that there is, um, you know, like chunks of fur, if you will. And then as it moves off, I'm gonna have it mostly centered on the nose. So as it moves off, it'll be moving back down into, into um, shadow. I've always talked about before, right, all edges are in shadow depending on the angle of your light source. So the more extreme your light source, the more your edges would be in shadow. It's usually how I like to do it. I've just been playing with that concept more recently. Just a little bit. But that also means right, the nose, right through here would be highlight as well, right through here. And then you're going to have, as it rounds under towards the nostril, this will go into shadow, but this will be highlight. And then as it comes out from under, not under the nostril, that'll be back into highlight. And then as it rounds down towards the mouth, back into shadow. Um, and so that whole nose will, will have a nice bit of highlight and shadow to it. So I'm really going to focus the highlight on being like up here and to the right, like up this strip on his face, and then potentially expanding a bit onto the forehead, but mostly this kind of strip. Um, and then it going into shadow with a few extra popping up. So I'm going to go ahead and get kind of that done. Um, and I'll be right back. Kind of that strip done, but what I'm doing right now is just kind of adding in some extra bits of more sporadic highlights, just where it'd be interesting for some light to look like it's catching, but otherwise not really taking over the mass highlight it did on the bridge of the nose. So allowing this to be a little bit more dramatic. And this really is um, just kind of a play it by how it looks, you know, like I'm just sort of drawing where in spots that seem like it would make sense to add a little bit more. And then timbering off those connections as they go into like more shadow, like here, adding a few more lines to brighten it up a little bit but otherwise leaving it, you know, dark. So it really is just kind of like picking and choosing what I think would look best. What I didn't get were the, were the ears, um, but you know, this right ear would be very much like the, um, uh, middle of the, you know, nose here where there'd be definitely some highlighting, a lot of highlighting because it's on that side. Left ear, however, um, you're kind of in the same rule that this whole side was, um, where you're just going to kind of, you know, we'll get some of it, particularly on the right side, where um, it'd be closer to the light source, but I'm going to be leaving a big 
chunk empty, I'm going to, again, kind of do it like I did through here, where I just chose a few lines to brighten up and otherwise left it be do the same to the to the ear here. Choose a few like spots and clumps of hair to brighten up, but otherwise just leave it be. Okay. All right. So Yeah, I think that actually turns out really well. So I am going to experiment with a couple of things. Ooh, sorry, my mouth, my words didn't quite come out right. I'm going to experiment with a couple of things. The first is a very orangish kind of, almost like a highlight in the highlighted section. And then I'm gonna take some blue um, and add some blue into the shadowed areas and we're gonna see what we're gonna get here. Right, so just like before, I'm just going to follow out these these clumps of hair, not fully filling it in. All I'm actually doing is adding in kind of a burst, a burst of color. It's a little bit unnatural, but um, I think it gives an interesting effect. So you don't have to do this, obviously. I think the buffalo looked fine without it, but... Um, it worked really well when I did the macaw. I added a burst of red to its like highlights and really like helped it shine. And then if I take blue, what's nice about that, like taking the blue is going to be a nice like counterpoint to the orange. So having, well, and, and blue, blue works really well as a shadow. You know, I, I usually use black as shadow, right? Like I allow the black to stand through. But blue is a great shadow color. And so taking that and, and using that um, for that purpose, even if it's a lighter color blue, actually really does work. And you can kind of see, I think adding the, the orange, it does a lot, right? Like just this makes it look like there's a highlight hitting it. Well, and it is brighter, so I did choose a color that was brighter for that purpose. Although for the macaw, it had a whole lot of bright colors going on. I don't know that the blue I chose was really that much brighter than the other colors around it, but, or I'm sorry, the, the blue, the um, red, because that's what I used for the macaw. And then I'm just gonna take it and I'm just gonna lightly do it on those spots I highlighted throughout his face as well. Those areas down in here. Nothing big, it's like a couple of like little like lines and swipes, right? So it's nothing like earth shattering. And then if I wanted to, I could add some down in here. That's like another burst of like color that I didn't do before. <laughs> where there's not highlight instead. So that adds a lot. You can already see it in a way that warms it up. You can also add it to the horns. Just sort of blend it in so I'm not like, I mean, I did do one line that was really harsh in there, but then I'm kind of blending that in. I'm gonna do the same thing over here, right? Like still have kind of one like solid line, but then really allowing that to blend in and using light pin pressure instead of um, doing heavy pin pressure. And of course we still have the eyes to go to. Okay, so now for a blue. You can see I'm choosing a light blue. I think I'm on a, yeah. So then I'm gonna do this in between where it's darker, right where all those shadows are. And again, all of this is just extra, like I don't have to do this at all, it would be fine without it. I actually think it looks good without it. And just like um, with the orange and kind of with this highlight through here, I'm just kind of playing it by 
ear here. Although I am following shadows. Of course, the plane's going to go overhead right when I wanted to talk. Um, I'm following shadows and going especially where, you know, like I'm drawing in between where the, that, the shadows are in between the clusters, the hair. I'm drawing in areas that are more shadowed in particular. So even though that's bright and it kind of almost makes it look like another highlight, it also works for that shadow in between. It's because it's adding another burst, like I'm adding a bit of, of cool to what is an, a, an, you know, a warm color. The brown is like a reddish brown. I've chosen an orange to highlight on top of that. Like taking a cool color, but especially blue. Blue is such a good, it's a good, it's a good um, shadow color. But taking that and then mixing it in between um, can help it stand out. It's the, you know, using color theory to our advantage. Yeah, okay, so then the last thing really is to add in the eyes. Right, so we have both, we can see both them, um, both uh, eyes, just one better than the other. Right, so I'm gonna draw in the um, pupil first, like I always do. Oh, that might be a little big. And then over here, and then sort of fill in very carefully, very lightly around it. Likewise over here, filling in very carefully, very light pin pressure to create a circle around it. I'm gonna take the elliptical maquis tool and create just an oval here. And what I'm doing is making sure my lines around the pupil are nice and straight. So I'm gonna erase that out by hitting the backspace button. I'm gonna select an inverse this, reselect the brush tool, and then um, change the direction a little bit of where I'm drawing so that I can fully fill in the edge of the pupil, but I'm not going all the way around, so I'm not gonna go up and above it. I'm gonna select inverse it again, reselect the elliptical maquis key tool, and then drag it over to the other side to kind of do the same thing. I'm working with a lot less space. Same thing though, I'm gonna hit the backspace Select inverse, reselect the brush tool, and then draw at a different angle along the edge of the pupil. All right, and then deselect it. Um, so then I'm gonna have a burst of light on the opposite side of the light source. I'm gonna start a new layer though. Right up against the pupil better than what I just did, because that really got that fuzzy. And then you're gonna fill in on the side of the light source and all the way underneath, but it's gonna go into shadow at the edge. Right, so all that's highlight in between, but it's gonna go into shadow as we come over to this edge. And then it's gonna go into shadow on the back side, but the back side is gonna be brighter than the top. So there is some like wiggle room there. Not much space here. And then over here, you know, obviously we don't have much space at all. And then I'm gonna switch this to white and add in, um, light flare on the eyes. All right, so just a little circle within the um, pupil and the highlighted section and then just fill it with the foreground color. And then we're gonna drag it to the other side and kind of do the same thing. We're working with a lot less space so some of this will be obscured 
right? So we're going to come in here, take the lasso tool and get rid of, you know, anything that's blocking it. We don't change the size. Well, we, we change the size as far as like drawing into it like that, but I wouldn't change the size of the original circle. At least I don't typically. I sometimes say these things and then I break my own rules, but you know, you know. Okay, just mimicking like hair blocking this eye over here. There it is. A buffalo or a bison. All right, so that's how you draw a bison. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay.